I've been working at Youth Care for 14 years. We take youth who are self-referred. Um, it might be a youth whose family is homeless or they might have run away because there's safety risks in the home um, or they may have been asked to leave their home um, because of behavioral issues, mental health needs have gotten too high for the family to support. For many of these kids, school means that they are getting a chance to get out of the cycle of homelessness, but it also means that they're being able to connect with people that they care about. And oftentimes the school is the one constant thing that they have. They've moved many times, they've lost friends, they've lost connection with family, but their school is the thing that's been consistent for them. The day that the governor announced the shutdown, uh, <laughs> no one knew at that point how long this was really going to last. We started to see youth getting a little bit sick of each other. They were starting to act a little bit more like siblings where there would be just little frustrations. We started to see that some of our youth were a little more sad, they were starting to disconnect more, they were spending more time sleeping in their rooms. We also started to see towards the end of last school year, youth sleeping all day and then staying up all night. Um, some of them would tell us that, yes, their homework was done, I was able to log into my class, but we'd hear from a teacher said, you haven't logged in all week. <laughs> so some of that is, of course, natural teenage behavior, um, but I think some of it was avoidance of feeling overwhelmed and not knowing what they were supposed to do, not understanding the assignments. I sat down with almost every youth towards the end of the school year and helped them log in and looked at what they had and what's this assignment? How do you do it? How do you know when your assignment is due? How do you know the instructions? We had struggles with Wi-Fi. How do we get that to work every day? So it's definitely been a challenge. We've been IT, school counselor, teacher, all of those things in, in one <laughs> principle sometimes. Last year we prioritized their mental health and just kind of trying to get them through with whatever coping skills we could give them. This year we're having to start them strong into their school year. How do we do that? We're not teachers. <laughs> right now it's, it's really been difficult looking down the road and hoping that school goes back into session. Just, you know, we're all doing the best we can, but we all know that this isn't the best for our youth. It's what's needed, it's what's necessary, it's what we have, but it is absolutely not the best thing for students and learning. And trying to learn in this new environment is particularly difficult for these youth. These youth are coming in in crisis. And so even just to get to the point where school is the thing that they're ready to focus on, they have to have all these other basic needs met. They have to have their health needs met. They have to have their mental health needs met. If they are struggling with substance use, if they're struggling with uh, potentially having a criminal record that they're trying to deal with, they're struggling to figure out where am I going to live long term to have this as well. I think it's been kind of a double whammy for them. Mm -hmm.